Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, Thursday morning uh, in the Word of God devotions this morning. Appreciate you uh, uh, listening and watching and um, all your comments and your encouragements. Appreciate it very much and uh, looking forward to what God has for us today. Uh, I don't know what he's got for us tomorrow, but I'm sure whatever the Lord has, it'll be good. <laughs> Brother Michael, good morning. And uh, looking forward to the weekend. Looking forward to the weekend. Always looking forward to the weekend, man. I think I, I think I look so forward to the weekend being Sunday. I look so forward that the week just like, it's like just goes so quick. But I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, let's uh, let's get into it this morning. It's just me and you, Brother Michael, this morning. I'll preach to one. Oh, Sister Carolyn's on too. Hallelujah. Good morning. Um, praise the Lord. Let's go to uh, let's go to Mark chapter six this morning. Yes, I know. Yesterday I said it was last time, but. I do read other places in the Bible, I promise, I do, I do read in other places. But the other day when I was, because I'm reading through the Gospel of Mark, and I like to take my time in the Gospels, and I, I was reading, um, you know, five and six, oh, this is going back the other day, and God just sort of gives me stuff, you know what I mean? And I just, I've got to share it. I can't not share it, so I've got to share it. So we're in Mark chapter six this morning again. I don't know where I'll be tomorrow. Tracy, good morning. Um, I don't think, now I don't hold me to it, but I don't think we'll be in Mark chapter 6 tomorrow. Uh, let's have a look at Mark 6. Uh, you, you know, as in the case with the Lord many times, people were multitudes thronging him and following him everywhere. And, and this, is, th- this is no different, all right? And this is no different. Verse 34, it says, And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. So we're going to we're going to look at one of probably, you know, I mean every miracle that Jesus did, Sister Judy, good morning, and every miracle that Jesus still does. They're great, you know what I mean? Like some of the stuff that we read about what the Lord's able to do, just it's 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 encouraging but it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. Verse 35, and when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, this is a desert place and now the time is far spent. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. Now, I tell you what, the, the, the very thought of people having nothing keeps coming up as I, as I read this, all right, in other places. It's just, it's amazing to me that the amount of times you see people that have nothing and then Jesus supplies them everything it's just an amazing thing it's an encouraging thought and i tell you what it ought to strengthen our faith our belief and our resolve in the lord jesus christ verse 37 he answered and said unto them give ye them to eat and they said unto him shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat he saith unto them how many loaves have ye go and see and when they were, and when they knew they say five and two fishes and he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments. I like that. I've preached a message before about fragments. Jesus Jesus is interested in the small things. He's interested in, in... Basically, Jesus doesn't waste anything go and collect the fragments go and collect the leftovers all right and of the fishes and they did and they did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men again one of one uh, you know lord's greatest miracles but here is the thought that i got as i was reading this the other day notice in verse 39 jesus says to the disciples he commanded them to make all sit down by companies and in verse 41 Jesus gave the loaves and the fishes to his disciples to set before them. And the thought that I got and the thought that I want to share this morning is this. Be included and involved in the miracle. Be included and involved in the miracle. Notice how Jesus included the disciples. He involved the disciples in what he was doing to bring about this amazing miracle in the lives of these people. Now, we know that Jesus could have done it. Hey, Brother Cameron, we know that Jesus could have done it himself, right? He he could have done it all himself. 
He he could have, you know, like, uh, you know, and in other passages, parallel passages in, you know, Matthew's account and Luke's account, uh, John's account even, uh, we know that uh, he he knew what he was going to do, but he was testing the disciples. He knew, Jesus knew. Jesus, in it, listen, Jesus didn't need to include and involve the disciples, but he did. And I tell you what, it's 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 a real blessing to be included in what the Lord's doing and not only to be included, not just to be included to the sense of I'm watching what Jesus is doing, I'm taking notes on what Jesus is doing, but to actually be involved in what the Lord is doing. And any time the Lord is involved in anything and he involves or wants to involve you, it's a miraculous thing. It's a blessing to be able to serve the Lord by serving others to be included and involved in the miracle. Are you available? Let me ask this question. Now, I know some of you, and and I know that the answer to this question would be a resounding yes, but are you available to the Lord to be included and involved in the miracles that he wants to do? Are you available? Now, again, as I said, I know many of you on and, and many of you are, and that's a real blessing. But, you know, it's amazing how that the Lord wants to include and involve us in these things. Now, let me just share a few thoughts about this passage. And we're going to probably, we're going to go to two other scriptures this morning. But notice how they needed the disciples, or you and I need to perceive the moment correctly. We need to perceive the moment correctly. They said in verse 35, when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away, that they may go into the country, round about into the villages, and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. Send them away. The disciples were not perceiving the moment. And we're often like that, where we don't perceive the moment. We're a little bit blinded. We're a little bit deaf. To, the, to, to perhaps what's going, blinded to what's going on, perhaps even a little bit spiritually deaf to what the Lord is trying to tell us what to do and so on and so forth. But we've also got to perceive the moment. There are opportunities regularly. I won't say on a daily basis, but there are opportunities regularly that the Lord wants to involve and include us in the miracles that he wants to do. Now, we know that he's in heaven. The Lord is in heaven, and, and but Jesus dwells within us. And there's still a work that he wants to do. There's still miracles that he wants to do. This is why, brethren, this is why, now you think about the gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, one of the gifts of, is the working of miracles, the working of miracles. Now, here is a great example of that. Here we have the disciples involved in the miracle they're 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 working the miracle it's now hey it's jesus doing it it's jesus that that is this is over overriding everything he's overseeing everything he's giving commandment he's given direction but it's the disciples that are involved in the miracle you could say that 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 the gift of miracles was being used right now and and jesus was using individuals to perform these miracles. So let's not be let's not be so afraid or ashamed to even think about, well, I believe in the gift of miracles. I believe in the gift of miracles and how that the Lord will use people to be able to do the miraculous. He's empowering, he's given them the ability, he's doing all those sorts of things. Ultimately it's the Lord that gets the praise. Amen. Ultimately it's God that receives the glory because it comes from him. But let's 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 not Let's, as I said, let's not be ashamed about this. Let's not be afraid about this. Let's allow ourselves to be included and involved in the miracle by perceiving the moment, perceiving the moment. Here was an opportunity. Here was an opportunity that the Lord was going to do something. And, and it almost, almost, it almost seems like it was going to be a wasted opportunity. That just, oh, there's so many people here. And we, and we look at the size of something. It's like, oh, well, you know, we, we, we don't have enough to, to be able to do this. We, well, shall I go and buy 200 penny worth of bread? You know what I mean? What's that amongst so many? You know, and all this sort of stuff that goes on. And, and we try and we look at the moment. We try to explain it away. It's like, what can we do about this? This is a hopeless situation, perhaps, or whatever. We can't take care of 5,000 people send them back to the villages i mean they in another place they'd been with jesus for three days they hadn't eaten anything for three days they were so enamored with the lord and listening to what he had to say and now that and jesus said i don't want to send them away fasting because they may faint by the wayside you know what i mean so 
let's perceive the moment every, every day. Let's just be sensitive to the leading of the Lord in what he may want to include us and involve us in his workings. What a privilege that is. What a privilege that is. Secondly, your talents and abilities will be put to the test. Your talents and abilities will be put to the test. Now, when I say your abilities, it's like, here's, here's a challenge now. Here's a challenge to your faith. Here's a challenge to, to what you have. Look at what he says, verse 37. He answered and said unto them, give ye them to eat. What? <laughs> I don't have enough to feed. Well, how many of you ladies, you know, sometimes we men are a little bit like this. We, um, you know, on a Sunday, you know, we've got visitors or whatever. And, and uh, you know, uh, the, the, the man has invited people back to, to home for lunch. You know, <laughs> oh, we're in the car. Oh, by the way, honey, I've invited such and such back to eat with us. He's like, what? I don't have anything. I don't have this. I don't have that. You know, and all this sort of stuff. You know, we've all probably been there before, you know. And it's like, you know, what am I supposed to give them? And we make a detour to the shops or whatever and, you know, go down to Nando's or Taco Bell. <laughs> Get some Taco Bell and put before them. But, you know, it's like Jesus saying, hey, you give them to eat. And they're like, uh, they, uh, uh, what, what, what? And he says this, he says, and they said unto him, shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? And so therefore, Jesus, again, knowing what he was going to do, he's challenging their ability, he's challenging their faith. He's, he's, he's putting them to the test. And this is the other thing. If you want to, if you want to avail yourself to the Lord to be included and involved in the miracle, you will be put to the test. What do you have? What do you have? Well, I don't have much. Hey, neither did the lad, which we'll talk about in a minute. Five loaves and two fishes amongst 5,000 people? That doesn't add up. The math doesn't add up, right? The science doesn't add up. But you know what? Jesus knows what he's doing, but he's going to put you to the test. He's going to say he's going to challenge your faith. He's going to challenge your belief. He's going to challenge the talents that you have, the abilities that you have. Will you take the talents and the abilities and give them to Jesus and say, Lord, here, here they are. Use them. Use them. But don't just give them to him and, and, and sort of, well, I've done my part now. Here, here's, here's whatever. No, 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 no. Be, expect. Commanded. Look what he says. He commanded them. You, you set before them. You do this. You do that. They were involved and included in this miraculous time that was going on. Let's go to, uh, let's go to John's gospel for a minute. John chapter 6. Let me read this to you. Because this is, the, this is the, the part dealing with the lad as well in John 6. And a great chapter, obviously, in John's gospel, dealing with the bread. Uh, but uh, look at what he says here, verse 5, John 6, 5. And when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, I like that, he singles Philip out. Because Philip, Philip seemed to have been the bean counter, you know what I mean? He's the one that's like, you know, adding everything up. When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him for himself knew what he would do. So Jesus is going to prove you. He's going to put you to the test. He's going to challenge you. Oh, Lord, I want to be involved in your work. I want to be involved in church planning. I want to be involved in whatever it is that you want me to do. Lord, include me, involve me. All right. All right. What do we do here? Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but uh, what are they amongst so many? And Jesus said, make the men to sit down. Now here is the thought about this. All right, here is the thought about this. What you give to Jesus may become the greatest miracle. What you give to Jesus may become the greatest miracle. Here is this lad Probably standing back, he's got his five loaves and two fishes and he's listening to the dialogue. He's looking at it. He's probably, the attention's got him because you've got 5,000 people just milling around like, what in the world? He's, he's probably interested in what's going on. And here he is, he's probably been down to the shop. Mum sent him down to the shop to go and buy bread and fish and that for the week or whatever for the family. And, uh, you know, here he is and, and all of a sudden he's singled out. Oh, there's a lad here. What? Hang on a second. I'm not included. In it. There's a lad here. He's got five loaves and two fishes. Ah, but what's that amongst so many? But Jesus took the loaves and the fishes. Now, I don't know what took place. I don't know. He, he would have been kind about it, I'm sure. He, he probably would have put the lad at ease and said, look, lad, you know, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine, you know. But can you give that? And the lad willingly gave him. 
And what the lad gave to Jesus became the greatest miracle. And you never know what you give to Jesus. You might think it's just small. You might just think, well, what does that mean? It's insignificant. It doesn't matter what you give to the Lord may be used in one of the greatest miracles in somebody's life. Avail yourself to the Lord. Allow yourself to be included and involved in the miracle that Jesus wants to do. Give him what you've got and allow him to take that and become one of the greatest miracles. You, it's just amazing to me, just amazing to me that how, how God uses people. I've always been a firm believer in this. I, I, <laughs> Sister Carol's not on this morning. She might watch a little bit later. Um, you know, she's a blessing and, and uh, the, the, the older lady, you know, Paul, I think Paul told Titus, you know, treat the older ladies as your mothers and we ought to give respect to our sisters. They're like, you know, sisters in Christ and treat them like our sisters and mothers and that. And um, uh, after about l- lunchtime on Sunday, you know, she had a, and I told her this and she, she'll be fine with this. Um, you know, she, she, she gave me a little bit of a, a loving, loving bit. Why didn't you let me know about your need? Why didn't you let me know about this? And that's very kind. All right, very kind. Why didn't you let me know? Well, I've always, I've always been someone that if I have a need or if I have a thing, I take it to the Lord. And if I, if I give it to the Lord, then, then the Lord will put on the heart of somebody, whatever. And, and, and you ought to do the same too. You, you've got needs. Everybody's got needs. Give the need over to the Lord. Cast all your care onto the Lord and just wait. And it might take a little bit of time because sometimes other Christians are a little bit, can't hear properly, you know what I mean? But the Lord uses people in your miracle. But what you, but uh, what I give under the Lord, the Lord's going to take that and use over here. What you give under the Lord, whether it's whether it's yourself, we'll talk about this in a minute. Whether it's yourself, whether it's your uh, 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 an offering, or whether it's uh, some material thing, or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. What you give to the Lord may be used as the greatest miracle. And so take your cares, take your needs to the Lord, leave them with the Lord. He knows and then he will work in the hearts and lives of others. And you will find that these people that had nothing ended up with all their needs being met. Why? Because there was a lad who gave Jesus all that he had. And it didn't seem much amongst so many, but he gave him everything. And Jesus used that. He was involved in the miracle. The disciples were involved in the miracle. Let's get involved in the miracle. Now, let me leave you with this thought. All right. Let me leave you with this thought. Uh, uh, Let me see. Let's go back to Mark 6 for a moment. Mark 6, because I want to read this, because I think this is a very important principle. This is a very important principle for us to learn. And, and, And sometimes we don't like it. But have a look at verse number 41 again. And when he had taken the five loaves and two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves. Now, here is the thought. What is given to Jesus is blessed and broken. Blessed and broken. You say, what's the significance in that? Well, what Jesus blesses, he breaks. And and notice that when he broke what was blessed, it was used in a greater way. So you've got the five loaves and the two fishes. He blesses it and then he breaks it. And he's able to distribute or the disciples are able to distribute to 5,000 people and the need was met. So the broke, if he hadn't of, of blessed and broke and if he hadn't broken what was blessed, then he w- the need wouldn't have been met. But he breaks so that there is a, a, a greater effect, a greater effect reaching. Listen, the five loaves and two fishes reached and touched more lives once it was broken than if it remained whole. And so here is the thought now, and this is the last scripture that I want to go to because I love this. There is a great necessity in Christianity today where we need to first give ourselves unto the Lord. Now look at this in 2 Corinthians 8. Again, this is talking about a need. There was a financial need in Jerusalem. Paul's gathering finances from the churches to take back to Jerusalem, right? And, and, and those that didn't have much, you say, I don't have much. Just give him what you got. Give him what you got. Let him multiply it. Let him bless it. Let him break it. Let, it, let him use and reach out to more lives with what you give him and be included involved in it. Look at what he says in verse 4, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this, this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord 
and under us by the will of God. Notice what they did. They first gave themselves to the Lord. Now, here is the thought. And this is where a lot of believers sort of, oh, I'm not too sure whether I want to be included or involved in this. If Jesus, if Jesus blessed what was given to him and he broke what was given to him to reach more lives, if we give ourselves first, Oh, we'll, we'll, Lord, here I am. Send me. Lord, here I am. Use me. Lord, here I am. Include me. Lord, here I am. Involve me. Great. This is, this is really good. I'm going to bless you. Oh, man, that's great. I love the blessing. I love to be blessed. But I'm going to break you. Oh, well, I'm not too sure about that. I'm not too sure about that. Listen, if we want to be effective in the miracle, if we want to be effective in the lives of other people, if we want to be effective in the day in which we live, first, give yourself to the Lord. Let him bless what is given. You give yourself a living sacrifice under the Lord. If you give yourself a living sacrifice, you can't take that back. Lord, I'm yours. Here am I. Good. I'm going to bless that. I love the blessing, but I'm going to break it. Not, not in a nasty way, but he's going to break us to the point where he can greatly use us. And being more effective, if we want to be involved and included in the miracle, then we give him what we got. And someone might say, well, all I've got is me. Give yourself to the Lord. I don't have much. Give what you have. If he's required, are you required of, are you required of the lad? And the lad gave him all that he had. The lad didn't know what was. And by the way, a lot of people, you know, 12 baskets full of fragments. And people say, wow, you know, there's 12 baskets, 12 disciples. I don't think the lad went home empty handed. I think the lad went home like, Mom, Mom, let me tell you what I saw today. Let me tell you what happened today, man. I had these five loaves and two fishes and there was this guy, Jesus, he took them off of me. And, and, and she's like, well, where are they? Where, did you bring anything home? And I'm, I'm sure he would have had something. I don't know what, but Jesus wouldn't have sent him home empty handed. And that's the thing. Sometimes we think, I'm going to give myself to you, Lord. And we think that we're just going to be left with nothing. Listen, Jesus loves to take the nothing that you have and you've got nothing. Here I am, Lord. Good. I'll bless it. I'll break it so I can greatly use it. Amen. Be included and involved in the miracle. It's great. It's exciting. Anyway, I better shut up. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us, Lord. Thank you for these amazing accounts in the scripture. And uh, Lord, they're there for our learning. And Lord, Lord, even today, even today, I don't know what others are going to pray, but even today, may we just say, Lord, here am I. I give myself to you. Use me. I want to be included. I want to be involved. And uh, Lord, may we step out by faith. And, and Lord, may we rejoice at being used in what you're involved in. And may we see miracles in our lives today. Thank you, Lord. Bless our day. May we live for you. May we walk in the spirit in Jesus name. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thanks for joining us this morning. And uh, have a great day in the Lord. Look forward to being with you tomorrow morning. So until then, God bless you and goodbye for now.